Hi, well, hello everybody. Um, I've got Mary here today um, who has has the most amazing story and it's amazing because uh, Mary is um, is a mature, more mature lady, shall we say, um, and she's also had um, a, a debilitating illness um, and so I just wanted to bring Mary on video because I want to prove to people um, that age is not uh, something that actually stops you losing weight and ME, which is what Mary has had, uh, is also something that, um, that can be overcome. And Mary is a shining example of, uh, of, what, um, of what can be done. So I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm going to hand you over to Mary because she's going to tell you um, all about really her background and um, and she's a, she's a wonderful, sprightly 70 year old and she's lost weight and even with ME. So over to you, Mary. Thank you so much and welcome. Okay, thank you. Hello, it's, it's very nice to be here. I have to admit it's the first time I've done anything like this, so hopefully it'll be okay. Um, <laughs> basically, my story is that uh, I've actually had ME four times in my life, um, probably only properly diagnosed the last time. But the last time was the worst attack because unfortunately it lasted for nine years, brought on by stress, mostly through, through a, a job that was turned out to be a job from hell. Um, and it kind of wiped me out for those nine years. During those nine years, I tried various different things as you do, I did lots of research, tried different um, supplements, different approaches, and everything would help a little bit. Um, but then I would plateau and I would be stuck and I would have to try something else again and it went on like that for all that period of time what eventually fixed me was discovering that I knew that I have a few allergies and so my mother very kindly for a birthday present bought me a blood test mm. to find out if I was having intolerances and other things and I discovered quite a lot so gradually over the next year we managed to eliminate all those intolerances and i turned the whole thing around and basically have never looked back the one other downside was that because of the me i was nothing like as active as i had been in the past yeah. and comfort eating was quite quite nice and my husband we, we worked together in a band with um, him as one of the musicians and i was a dance caller teaching scottish Cayley dancing but I had withdrawn from this because it was just all too tiring, couldn't cope. And so all of that just added to the fact that the weight went on. For me, it wasn't excessive, but it's also something that happens in my mother's family. They all put weight on in middle age, and I take after that side of the family. Right. Um, I'd also had a total hysterectomy when I was 36 and had 22 years on HRT. Wow. Which... Um, for some people would have been delightful because it gave me boobs. I didn't want them because <laughs> I'd, I'd never had them before and I really didn't want to have them at all. So I went from being a pretty much standard 12 into a 14 into the lower half state of 14, the upper high state 16. And I, I just hated it. I lost, I didn't have the energy. I still tried to go dancing, but I was doing what I call sort of old lady shuffle. And instead of instead of actually dancing, I didn't seem to lift my feet off the floor, and I, I just it just wasn't the satisfying and enjoying enjoyment thing that I'd always had. And I realised that I had gone up from approximately ten stone, just under ten stone, to about eleven, two or three, which may not sound a lot, but for me it was horrendous. Yeah. And so over the next year to two years, I tried all sorts of different things and I did manage to bring my weight back down. And my aim was to get down to 10 stone and feel fit and healthy again. And I got there and then it started to creep back up again. <laughs> and, I, and at that point, I couldn't blame the ME, but I got a weakness for cakes and puddings and mm. all, all those lovely things. And, you and half the oh, population, Mary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But 
um, I mean, I'm famous for there's got to be a dessert if Mary's coming is that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I just was casting around and to be honest I'm not sure how I came across Slimpod probably mm. somewhere on the internet and I was very impressed with the whole idea and I had actually used hypnosis in the past because during the ME struggle people kept buying me different supplements to try which was very kind of them but I had a block and I couldn't swallow pills right and most of them you had to swallow whole and it was impossible mm. and I thought people have spent money on me and how can I how can I deal with this mm. so I tried hypnosis through a very friendly local GP um, who I only had two sessions with him and after the first one I swallowed my first ever pill right and I thought, well this obviously works if you want it to work it will work so I figured that the limpo system would probably work on the same way mm -hmm. and perhaps help me to get back into controlling just those urges for the cakes and the puddings and just, just sure, generally. sure I mean yeah the, the slim pod works in a a different way to oh. hypno because that, that's um it is we nudge you towards uh seeing food differently which mm -hmm. is um where the whole there's a, there's various elements which you know that work in the same way but we've got a kind of a secret source that goes with it um <laughs> as, as, as you probably well realized. it works <laughs> No, it definitely worked. It helped me. I used, I took the trial program and during that time I could feel that I was realizing when I didn't need to eat anymore, when I could get to the end of something. Probably, I think I was intentionally cutting my portion size, so I was probably still cleaning the plate. Right. But um, I didn't feel bad if I didn't. And I amazed people that on several occasions I said no because Mary never says no to dessert but I've, I've found a way through that I didn't really try and um, I, I didn't deny myself anything if there was something I really wanted I had it yeah sure um, absolutely and, and when did you uh, actually uh, when did you start Mary what what was the date was it um, was it January 2019 uh, February I think February. in February I can't remember the exact okay. date but it was February yeah Okay, and now um, we're in now absolutely. we're in March or just about March twenty twenty. March so. twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, in the twelve week program, I probably did all of my achieving, my serious achieving during that time, mm -hmm. and probably by the end of twelve weeks, I was more or less back where I wanted to be, around about ten, just over ten stone. Amazing. Uh, feeling very much better, much more in control. Um, and I stayed on the program after that, just just to make sure, I suppose, belt and braces, just to make yeah, sure it was still working. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, well, I have to admit that I was very lax in doing stuff, and I didn't really do much with work. And um, I, I did still stand on the scales, but I did like the measuring bit because I discovered particularly that I was shrinking yeah. um, through measuring all the bits of me, and also the fact that I could now get into clothes that were 14 in the top half and not the 16. Fantastic. Great improvement. So during that. I was that, very happy with that. Yeah, during that first 12 weeks, how would you say your mindset changed? What, what would you say the differences were in your mindset? What were you doing during the day that, um, you know, that, that was different? How, how, when you said you were much more in control, mm -hmm. what, what are examples of that? I think basically just more in control at meal times i don't tend to snack really but if somebody invites me out for coffee or whatever i i want something to go with my coffee or my tea um and i found it was much easier to say no i would just have the drink i didn't need to have the other stuff right uh, my husband doesn't have a sweet tea anyway so it was easier to say well no i don't actually need to have a dessert i don't need to have pudding after this um and just generally, there was a, an awareness of what I was doing and what I was trying to achieve and a satisfaction that I could actually see it was working. And right. that I was actually able to say, no, you don't need that. Go away and do something else. And if you come back and you still want it, we'll have it. And that, right. that actually worked. Fantastic. And, and so, you could 
and you could hear your full signal quite loud. I mean, how was the plate thing? Because so many of us have grown up with this, you know, there are children starving in Africa and we got to finish our plates. Yeah. And yeah. Um, how did that yes. work? Was it just that you felt really full? Give, you know, give some examples of what happened there. Um, I don't, I just tried to be more aware of it. And as I was eating, I tried to eat more slowly and I tried to take smaller portions smaller bites so that things right. would last longer uh, interspersed it with glasses or bits of drinks of water as i went along um and just tried to, just tried to feel it just tried to be yeah. aware of like yeah. do you really need any more of this and yeah not Fantastic. trying to be controlled from my body not my eyes <laughs> great so so basically you were engaging with it you know from a mental point of view you were engaging with it as well yeah yeah yeah, I figured that was what was necessary to, to get back on top of it all. Yeah, perfect. And to see it, it worked. And now, a year later, tell uh -huh. us where you're at. Well, a year later, I have stayed on the programme from in as much as not, not using the Slimpod tracks regularly the mm -hmm. way I did in the beginning just occasionally uh, until I realized about a month ago that I hadn't actually listened to it for quite a wee while okay and I got through, got through most of the winter including Christmas which isn't a big deal in this house but I, people eat Absolutely. <laughs> people make meals make, and there's lots of goodies around and I'd got through all of that and I maintained my my target which as I said was right about the 10 stone mark and I allow myself two or three pounds either way and then I, I just really think right get a grip you don't want this to go any higher and so a year on I've I'm more or less at the size I want to be I've got pretty much the fitness levels I go dancing probably four or five times a week and I walk the dog and and I do all the other stuff that one does um and generally feel better for it and just feel really pleased that I got here which was why I wrote to thank you because your system is what, what got me here. Thank and you. I'm not sure that I would have, I'm not sure I would have got here without it because thank it you. just showed up at the right time. Great. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, thank you. I mean, we'd have met, you weren't part of our slim pod community, the, the group. Um, so I would never have known you existed with, if you hadn't emailed me. So thank you so much for doing that. And how is the ME now? Is that, um, do, 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 you know, um, ha, how's that? I, well, basically I don't even think about it. Right. Um, I've realized, having realized that the, the, the conditions that I had with it earlier were that and I've done quite a lot of research into it and I realized for myself that when you're younger and you get ME I was in my teens the first time right when you're younger you bounce back quicker um my stepdaughter also had it in her teens and she bounced back much more quickly my husband had it in his 50s probably mm. um and wasn't he took a couple of years over it wow. but I think I think in my case it was because here I was yet again in that situation mm. and it probably just the body had just had enough of everything now having it's well it's the best part of it must be coming up on 10 years really since it was it was in full flow I don't on a day-to-day -day basis I don't even think about it it doesn't mm. occur to me that it's there but I do believe that it's an underlying thing that probably always is right because it always seems to have been there yeah and so there are warning signs uh, people with ME have such varying uh, symptoms mm. they're different for, for just about everybody you talk to and in my case in addition to the sort of total exhaustion I had an awful lot of pain I had left-sided pain I had oh. left -sided left-sided headaches, left-sided body pain, left-sided leg and, and such like. The right side of me was nearly always fine, which was wow. Amazing. Well, yeah. odd. <laughs> it was very strange. But I've, I know that if I really do overdo things, I start to get pain in my legs. Right. And it's with my left leg. I now have arthritis as well, which doesn't really help. Mm -hmm. But um, I can tell the difference in the pain. So if it starts to happen again, I just say, right, cool it, slow down, don't do anything for a while, calm down, relax. And so far, so good, so far that it's working. It's not, not fantastic. Bad. <laughs> fantastic. Now I I've spoken to lots of people with um 
you know, with, with illnesses like this and, and fibromyalgia and gosh, I said that. I You did. It just rolled off the tongue. <laughs> oh, my life. That's amazing because normally I really struggle with that word. Um, so, uh, I need to yeah. Look at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and I talk to a lot of people like that and, and you know, the sugar that they start consuming because of comfort eating um, seems to make it worse. Did you find that that because sugar, sugary snacks, etc., can be so uh, you know they just do affect um, the uh, the body in, in in terrible ways. And so, yeah. did you did you notice that because you weren't eating so much of that 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 had an impact, or or was that just purely on the weight or I mean did it did it have an effect on your mental um your mental health too I'm not sure really I've never really thought about it that way right. um I, I think there's there is an element of a sugar rush that yep. you feel better because you've had that thing yeah um but I, I'm not I'm not not hugely aware of it it's right. just that when I when I did and do eat these things there's the it, it's the sensation that's yeah. the taste and the oh that is really good stuff you know um and it, it seems to be a mixture of my eyes see it and think oh that would be really good and that was the thing I found I needed to pay attention to right if, I, if it was out of sight or I hadn't thought about it and I was busy doing things it was okay but it's as you say it's the evening when you sit down in front of the tv and or yeah. that kind of thing but I still do that. I have four pieces, four small pieces of dark chocolate with the evening news. Right. Um, but that's enough. I don't Absolutely. need any more. Well, that's, that's fabulous. And, you know, because I really believe in the 80-20, um, you know, rule as such, whereby I don't suppose it's a rule. I hate the word rule. I'm <laughs> really, 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 really against rules. Um, and, uh, but yeah, if, if you're eating 80% of the time healthily and you have your treats for 20% um, of the time, then, you know, that, that's what living's all about. It's well, just, it's, you know, it's, it's just when it goes to the opposite side, when, you know, when you're eating unhealthily or eating snacks, maybe 60, 70, 80% of the time and only having 20% of the time. Mm, um, that's good. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's yeah. what happens with habits. It, they just creep up without you even knowing. And uh -huh. that, that sounds like, you know, a little bit about what happened with you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So fantastic um i'm going to end that there because um i just uh, you know uh, i'm I, I wanted to speak to you uh because uh, you know you wrote me such a lovely email and uh and you're you're just um i i really really believe that if you can you can and mm -hmm. i know that there are people with illnesses and they're on medication that um that can stop you know or can um mean that you're going to fat storage mode rather than weight loss mode and it just um you were just a shining example of <laughs> if you can you can you know if you believe you can you can mm -hmm. well it certainly has worked and and i really th i've told i don't know if they followed it up but i have told several people about slim pod because oh, I, thank think you. I think it's a system that really works and it, you know it, it's worth putting in the effort and giving it a shot if that's what you want to do thank you so much mary really really appreciate um your letter and the time that you've taken here on on video yeah. so thank it's you so fun. much it's thank been fun it's so being nice to actually talk with you as opposed to just seeing you on the video it's been very yeah. nice <laughs> thanks so much okay um, thank you